Hi, how you doing? Welcome back to Men for Nations in Washington, D.C. I like to call it the prayer center of Washington, D.C. I'm here with Dick Simmons today as always. Uh, my name is Dan Rick. And, and Dick, uh, when we were praying um, earlier, uh, you used Jude, the book of Jude, as a prayer. And, and the, the power of such a small book, it's, you could spend days and days and weeks on it, but Will you just uh, share with us uh, why Jude was so powerful for you today? For you today? Well, we were we had Hayes Harold on giving us all these heavy scriptures mm -hmm. on what we're up against and what has to change in both sides of the aisle, both parties, and for our nation. And Jude just really lets you see what we what they evidently the early church was up against this, but mm -hmm. it would even get harder and more right. challenging and difficult as we go. <clears throat> and but it gives you an answer, and uh, you, you, the whole chapter is pretty negative and what you're up against. But then it tells you what the how, how you can overcome it and, and reverse it, and uh, then it's tremendous benediction, sure, and positive. So anyhow, it starts by saying, uh, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved by God and Father and kept by Jesus Christ. Grace, mercy, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. So that's positive. But then he said, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write to you and urge you to contend for the faith. Are we contending today for the faith, or are we in the mess we're in right now, the moral mess and everything else, and our, our cities are in so uh, blighted? Uh, because we haven't contended for the faith in the past. We You're right. Let it slip away. But it says, to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints, the holy ones, for certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men hmm. who change the grace of our God into license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, their only sovereign and Lord. Now I'm skipping down to Lord where he talks about, see, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy angels to judge everyone, to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts that have done in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These men are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and they flatter others for their own advantage. Mm. Sort of sounds like today what's happening here on <laughs> Capitol Hill. Okay, but dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. Those are the men who divide you who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, this is what we can do about it, but you, dear friends, build yourself up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit and then keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. And while you're waiting, and you're keeping yourself in the love of God, be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. And to others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained with the corrupted flesh. Mm. That's pretty succinct. Right. What we have to do. But it starts with our doing what? Building ourselves up in the most holy faith. The tabernacle had three areas, the outer court, the middle court, and the most holy. And <clears throat> only the high priest was permitted to go into the most holy place. And there he, his job was to minister to the Lord, and to then he would be given coals of fire from off the altar to go out and in Ezekiel to scatter the man clothed in fine linen was to go out and scatter these coals of fire over the cities to purge them. Mm. And they also the high priest was instructed to teach the people the difference between the holy 
and the profane between the clean and the unclean. That's our problem today. We're just not getting clear teaching on what holiness is and what God uh, requires and what he offers us if we'll, we'll, we'll believe in There's yet, yet more grace. And, and uh, it's available to us. But we're not going to be able to impact all this ungodliness around us and we're not going to be able to minister and snatch from the burning those that are perishing and convince those that are doubt. I mean, any of you out there doubting? <laughs> right. You need some convincing? We need to convince one But we have to build one another up. We've got to get a, a, a more uh, confident confidence in God that he's not only holy, but it says in Leviticus, he makes holy. Right. He'll make us holy if we trust him. And there's yet more great. So then you get this benediction at the end that this wonderful, by the way, you can memorize this whole book. It's right, it's very easy. One, one chapter. But it says, the doxology is, uh, is this, to him who is able to keep you from falling. You want to be kept from falling? He's able. And to present you before his glorious presence without fall. Now it doesn't say without sin. It says without fall. Wow. Not only without sin, but without fall. And, and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Now notice, it's not only forevermore, mm -hmm. which is forever and ever and ever and ever, it's for now. He wants us to overcome evil with good now. He wants us to be overcomers. And he wants us to, to live blameless, harmless lives walking in the light and, 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 and sharing the word of life with others and rescuing them from all this ungodliness. This is, for those of you who don't understand, you know, we spent time talking about this, or, and uh, this is my third time that we've talked about this today, and it's more and more powerful every time that we have the authority now. Yeah. And because that bleak and dark picture is painted, but it's ended with triumph. It's ended with power, and it's available to us now. Now, <laughs> you know, and every time Dick says that, I get the same result. We need to get moving, and we need to get and praying. There's grace there. There is there's, grace. There's mercy. There's peace to those who will build themselves up in the most holy faith. Get up on the top of the mountain and stay there. And that's all contained in a page and a half. All in a page. One, one, one. Well, just one chapter. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you very much, Dick. I'm going to ask you to close us in prayer. Father God, we, we do, if we were to just have, a, be, have to trust in ourselves and our own ability to manipulate and figure out and analyze, we'd be in great despair. But God, you, you've, you've made it very clear here that we, there are promises in your word that we can take hold of that will build us up and in the most holy relationship with you. Not in the outer court, not in the middle court, but in the most holy relationship with you where we can minister to you and we can learn the difference between the clean and the unclean and the, the holy and the profane. And then we can go out and snatch from the burning those that are perishing, hating even the garment spotted with the flesh. God, it, it, you, you're wanting us to believe you. To, it says, uh, Paul said in, 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 in his, his passage, classic passage, on why we must pray for those in authority there in, in uh, 1 Timothy 2, that uh, he ends up by saying, Therefore I urge men to lift holy hands without wrath, without doubting, mm -hmm without murmuring, without complaining. Quit criticizing. Just lift, get holy hands and pray in faith, believing, and God will turn the battle and his kingdom will come on earth now as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. It, and you know, it, it really is, especially when we talk about, you know, don't criticize. Don't just, you know, malign people. But instead, rescue them. I mean, that is the power that's available to us, as Dick would say, now. And we'll be able to do that if we get in God's Word and right. we remind Him of His promises. And that's why you don't want to be listening to all of this, uh, you know, uh, 
commentary and, and all of the pundits and, 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 uh, on CNN and even Fox News because they're, they're so negative. Right. And they're sort of sporting and laughing at these things we should be weeping over and grieved over. But, uh, and like I say, if you're going to, you do need to be informed about what's going on, but when you watch these, these, these uh, newscasts and commentators, you, you, you need to do it like you would if you were drinking poison. You just need to, pour, you can drink some poison, but don't take too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to kill you. So get, all, get back into the Word. Right. Or have your Bible open there and be reading the Word while you listen to them and realize they don't, they don't have answers. All they can do is tell us what the problems are. Right. Well, thank you very much, Dick. And it all just hinges on the one of the great good news lines of the Bible that God desires all men be saved. Mm -hmm. And we're commanded to the very end uh, to work and to pray and to be men with holy hands that we might snatch those who are perishing. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, and until next time, Dan Rick and Dick Simmons here at Men for Nation headquarters in Washington, D.C.